Hi there. Um, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe. I thought this would be a fun opportunity to um, deconstruct a Hans Zimmer synth patch in Zebra. And so uh, right now I'm playing the Hans Forlorn patch, which is one of my favorite patches, um, like in any synth ever. And right now I've got it completely closed. Uh, Many CC ones all the way down, and I just I love how pad-like it sounds. I also love how rich it sounds. This is part of a sound set that came with um, a sound collection, uh, the Dark Zebra sound collection, that uh, Howard Scar and Hans Zimmer designed for the Dark Knight trilogy. And I've also heard these in a few other movies, uh, definitely in the most recent, uh, the Blade Runner remake. Uh, in fact, I th I'm, like, I'm pretty sure it was this patch. Um, once you open it up, you'll hear how, how sort of gnarly it sounds. So um, I've had Zebra for years. It's it's a, honestly it's like, I mean I've played only a few software since, but this one hands down was like my first choice, and part of it is just because it sounds great even out of the box. Um, another part of it is these presets. Um, what what I think what's so great about them is it's not just that you get the sounds that were used in these movies, which, um, you know, if that's if. If you like the sounds, then yeah, you should definitely get these. But the thing that was so appealing to me is that it's not just the sounds that you get that were used in the movies. It's the blueprint for the thought process that went into creating these sounds in the first place. Like this is basically a schematic that we're looking at here. And to me, that was really appealing as someone who's who's uh, b trying to start create my own patches entirely from scratch. Um, instead of relying on presets too much. So um, we're going to break down not this patch, but we're going we're gonna to rebuild a pad with these same qualities. Something with this rich, rich character in it. And first things first, I'll actually, I'll show you the one that I've been working on. Um, user... Okay, this is where I hit. It still needs some work, but um, this is where we're at right now. So it definitely has a very similar quality. I mean, I was, I, I really was just trying to recreate the same, same vibe. Um, so we are going to recreate this exact patch and I'm going to walk you through sort of my process um, and why I chose the variables that I did. And uh, I'm going to be very uh, first principles about this. And so if you're like a professional synth programmer, this, this might bore you because I'm going to be really uh, pedantic about why I made each decision the way that I did. And part of the reason is because it'll help, you know, if you're if you're learning how to do this stuff, it'll help you with that. But also, I can already feel um, some of this is becoming very instinctual for me. And I, can, I know that if I try and do this video in a month or two months, um, I'll just be making decisions without realizing why I'm doing it and I won't be able to stop and explain it because um, it'll just become second nature and right now is kind of the sweet spot so um, so let's do this from scratch uh, in it let's load in a knit patch oh yeah and before we do this I should say um, hopefully you're listening on a nice pair of headphones or a nice pair of speakers because the the changes I'm going to be making are very very subtle and over time it'll create a uh, a very very different sounding instrument than what we're starting with but um, you'll need to be able to hear those 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 tiny details so um, when you get when you load a knit you get a, an oscillator patch which I don't want I'm gonna load a frequency modulating oscillator and I'm gonna get rid of this 
remove. Okay, so right now we just it's just a sine wave. Just blinky plunky. So let's um what's the first thing we want to do? Let's um let's send this. Well, first off, this is coming out of envelope one. So if I want to create a pad, usually the first thing you typically do is you start adjusting um, attack decay, sustain release. So I usually put attack eh, somewhere around there, two o'clock, something like that. Decay, I like to, I actually like a lot of decay and not so much sustain, depending on, depending on the samples. Uh, and release, I typically, I put it at the same, just a little bit farther than attack is usually what I do. Okay, so the timing on that feels nice to me. Um, oh yeah, and let's so the velocity. This is this is a nice one to have too. You won't notice much of a difference now, but once we get stuff routed in here, you'll really hear it. Okay, so first off, it's really muddy down there. Let's bring that up twelve semitones. So one of the things that, that really struck me about the Hans Forlorn patch is how how wide and how much depth is in it. But what's cool about it is there he doesn't achieve that with width at all. In fact, he is in mono. Um, the way that the width is achieved is through uh, modulation mappers, which I didn't know those were even a thing in Zebra until I started dissecting this patch. And so um, I'll explain to them what they are as I'm going through them. But... First things first, let's, uh, let me show you what the FM knob sounds like. Actually, right now it won't do anything because we're set to FM by input. It needs something to oscillate with, so we're going to set it to self. And now when I open it up, you'll hear, you'll hear the filter opening up. Very cool. Um, let's not set it very far, though. Okay, and now I'm going to set this to... I forget what I set this to. Let's I, let's try envelope one. I, that, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. So, so what you're hearing is um, the envelope open up the attack on the FM. If I crank this, it'll sound even more pronounced. Okay, and the reason I like this already is because we've already taken a simple sine wave and now we've added another character to it that wasn't there before. Okay, um, and so speak and, and continuing along this idea of width, um, let's see, did I start with the LFO? No, let's start with, um, let's create a modulation map for panning and I'll explain what this is for. Okay, so modulation map one. So when you have it set to increment, every time you punch a note, it just cycles through all of these bars. Which I think it's 128. Right now it's not changing anything because I haven't sent it. So if I crank it, you should be we should be hearing it um, pan on the right and left. Right, left, 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 right, left. Okay, so you get the idea. Um, and the, the reason this is really cool is because if you decided that you just wanted the sound to be wider, like let's let's turn this off. Uh, zero. And you decide you want to add width, you would do this. Uh, for, well, you would add it in stereo and then you would add the width. Actually, I'm sorry, you'd have to detune it, so let's do that as well. Okay, so you can hear how wide it sounds right now. The only thing that I think is probably holding a sound like this back is it's this wide all the time, and it there's no variation in that whatsoever. So I think that's part of what makes this uh, this Hans Forlorn patch so interesting. It's, at least it's the first time I've seen it looking at these patches is that um, the modulation mapper is changing everything based on panning and it's doing it different literally every single time you press a note. So every time you get these... You're getting a different amount of panning the way that a real... 
real mm-hmm. instrument would sound in a real room or close to it at least. I do want to come in. I don't like too many of these in a row. So I'm going to just break this up a little bit because it's, you don't want the instrument to feel like if you play certain notes, it's only on the left side. So just bear with me a second while I go through these. Crank up one of those, bring up a little bit of this. These are kind of centers, that's okay. Okay, this is probably fine. Okay, so back to where we were. All right, pretty cool so far. Um, Now, another change or another um, thing that I noticed that was really interesting in the way um, Zimmer's patch was built is there was a modulation map tied to the detuner, um, which I don't know if there's a way to do it here within FMO, but you can use the matrix to do this, which is what I'm going to do. So if you click and hold the target button, you can drag it up here, and I'm going to attach it to detune. So now whatever I sign here is going to uh, modulate um, well whatever I tell it to. So let me let me sign it first. So um, this is going to be nope, just kidding. Modulation map two. And the source, let's set it to envelope one maybe. I'm not sure what this is gonna do, but let's let's hear. Yeah, so you can already hear how insane that sounds. Oh, wait. And so, yeah, I need to change the way this is assigned. So this one I actually don't want to increment. I want it to be assigned by key. And the reason for that is just control. So that sounds crazy. Okay, so now when I press a key, it'll always do the same... do the same amount of detuning. So that's really flat. If I wanted it really sharp, it would do this. Hear the difference? Okay. Um, this is a lot. I'm not going to leave it this way, but I do want to edit with it this way. And same deal here. I don't want too many in a row. So let's bring some of these up, some of these down. Mostly up, it looks like. Uh, one more. Oh, wow, that's bad. Hang on. Let me pull these down. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. And sure, let's call it a day. All right, so again, it's going to sound crazy out of tune. But I can control how much of the detune I want going to um, the multi-modulation map. Uh, or sorry, the, uh, God, what is the name of these things? I'm already blanking. Um, it's uh, here. I actually have it. Sorry, this is so annoying. mostly my brain's fault I'm on like three hours of sleep um, yes modulation mapper yeah I was right well, I'm just sorry don't even listen to me just ignore everything I'm saying okay um, so how do we get this to not be so insane send it less so actually I want all that going to the modulation mapper, but I don't want all the envelope going there. Okay, and essentially what I'm doing is now I'm just playing until it doesn't feel insanely out of tune, but you can hear the subtle difference there what um, what the envelope is doing is it's sending a little bit of that to the um, to the detuner so you're getting these subtle changes in notes but it's not the same every time and um, again we're adding this complexity to a sound that wouldn't otherwise be there it would just be a straight up sine wave so um, okay and now I do want this to open up at least a little bit when I crank the mod wheel so let's tie this again. Let's uh, let's do one of these guys. Um, huh? Actually, what happens when I do that? Cool. 
cool. So I want to set this. I'm going to set my CC1 as high as I can, and I'm going to set my highest level. Oh, yeah. So you, that's right around the, the threshold there where you just get noise. Right, and so, so far, and like, honestly, what's so cool about this is look how much complexity and sound we've gotten, and we only have one oscillator. Um, that's, that's really cool. I'm, I'm really, really happy with this already. So, the only thing that will make this better right now that I can think of, go to global, uh, yes, so let's get rid of you. I'm not into you. Let's add some EQ. There's a few frequencies in here. Typical range is like 200, 300. Oh, God damn it. All right. Well, that was fun. We had a little computer crash there. Uh, screen flow crashed. I don't know why it won't keep recording. But anyway, um, back to where we were. I wanted to sculpt out some of the sound around 200. Yeah, just a little bit. It's just a little too, too rich. Maybe I'm listening on not the greatest speakers in the world, but... That's a bit nutty. Let's just leave that alone. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So, now we have all this nice width. We have um, little variations in, in, um, in pitch, which is great. Yeah, it's great. Um, let's add... I believe in the Zimmer patch there's a delay. Pretty sure there is. Let's add one in that. Oh, cool. So it's split up. Oh, I see. So it's like stereo. Um, so let's do... We don't want them all to be quarter. Let's do an eighth here. We'll leave that at a quarter. That's on the right side. This one we'll leave. And then this one we'll do... Let's do a half. See what that sounds like. still sort of a little too hard pan for me. I'm going to back off a little bit. Even now, still too much. Okay. Now, the only thing that would make this better is reverb. Reverb makes everything better. And I, I honestly, I really, really love the reverb unit they have in this. I don't know what they're doing, but it's, it's fantastic. It's really great. I hate you. See, this happens. This happens so often. It's so frustrating. Let me pull this back up. Hopefully it'll let me. Yeah, and now my now my thing is gone. Why do you do these things? Why? Why do you do these things? I hate you so much, Logic. Okay, there. Um, hopefully that worked. If anyone can recommend a program that captures screen well in Catalina... Please let me know. That was terrible. ScreenFlow is not doing the job. Um, okay, so where was I? I we had built. Oh right, oh, shit. Everything's gone. <laughs> Everything's gone. I should have saved that. Um, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Let's go back to the original patch that I built. Thank God I saved that. Okay. 
guys, we're pretty close to back where we were. Sorry about this. This sucks. Um, anyway, <sighs> reverb settings were, I guess, pretty close to what they were. Yeah. Okay. EQ was... Oh, I did take off a bit off the high end. Okay. Um, everything else looks really similar, actually. Panning went to this. Volumes cranked. Cool. So let's uh, let's play with the sound. We're almost there. Let's give it a little bit of dirt, not too much. It's kind of cool. You can you can definitely hear that velocity now. The velocity difference. Here's me pressing middle C soft. Here's me hitting it hard. You hear how it opens up a little bit more. Um, again, so. All these little tiny differences that we've made really do add up to something completely different. And it's, I, I kind of like to think about this like cooking, you know, it's like um, if you're making cookies, one teaspoon of baking soda is going to give you a significantly different cookie than adding two teaspoons of baking soda. And that takes place at the beginning. Um, and it sort of compounds over time to make this completely different thing. And so, um, do not underestimate just little tiny subtle changes. And and look, we did all this with delay, reverb, EQ, and panning, and that's it. Um, so yeah, if uh, if you like this video, I'll let me know down below, and I'll I'll make another one, and we'll we'll keep exploring this patch, and we'll make the big open, uh, the big open Hans Forlorn patch. Um, yeah, I hope you stay safe, take care, and uh, I'll see you soon. <laughs>